Hello, my name's Lynette Anderson. I'm talking to you today from my studio in Queensland, Australia. We're going to talk about my block of the month quilt. We're on month four. I can't believe that we've got to that already. And I'm going to talk to you about making the hexagon flowers because there are a couple of different ways that you could choose to make them. Now the block, you can see it's got a pieced gate and then there are some lovely flowers, some of which are hexagons and some are not. And there's a dog. I can't imagine not having a dog in my life. Now the dog that I've used in this quilt is from my very early childhood memory of the first dog that we ever had. His name was Butch. He came to us as a bit of a surprise animal to our home in that my dad bought my mum a very old mini. He bought it um, from a farmer, it had been sitting in a field and the problem was when he got there that there was a dog that lived in the car and the farmer said you can have the car if the dog comes with you. And the dog was quite happy in the back of the car. They arrived at home in our little house in the country and the dog, sh the story is, because I was too small to remember, the, the dog shot out of the car straight into the house and he lived with us uh, for a very long time. He was a big dog, um, but he has a very uh, a special place in my heart and I wanted to include him in this quilt. Now the first little dog that I made, and I used the um, technique with the applique paper and the Appliquick tools, he actually was a little bit small on the quilt. So I simply made him a little bit bigger, but you can see how cute he is just on his own. What I'm going to talk to you about today is making the hexagons and the fact that there are two different ways that you could make those hexagon flowers. Okay, as I mentioned before, there's two different ways that we could make the hexagon flowers and these are the little flowers that you're going to be making. Uh, you already would have made some for the previous month, but I want to talk today about how you could be making them. You could be making them using the traditional paper pieces. Um, lo there's lots of different um, companies that produce these, so there's no one in particular that's better or the other. Just remember you have to take those papers out from behind the fabrics before you apply them to the background. Or you could choose to use these new ones which are made from exactly the same paper as the Appliquick paper that we were using before. It's fusible on one side, it's water soluble, but it softens as you work with it and you actually leave it in. Now these ones come pre-cut and they're available in half inch, one inch, one and a half, and especially for us, Helen's created some three quarter inch ones. So what you're going to do if you're going to choose to use those is you're going to take your fabrics and fuse it, so shiny side to the wrong side of your fabric, to your chosen fabrics. Once you've done that, you're going to um, take your fabulous, remember the lovely soft handles of these perfect scissors, and you're going to cut a seam allowance. Your seam allowance doesn't need to be perfect. What you need to remember is the perfect shape, the perfect part of this, if you like, is the paper. So the seam allowance is just roughly quarter of an inch. We're then going to take um, a fabric glue pen and we're just going to, you can either do this with your fingers or with your Appliquick tools, turn those edges over exactly the same way as you would if you were doing it with the papers. Just keep working in, I, I work in a clockwise direction, but if you, if you work in anti-clockwise, I really don't think that that's going to matter. So I'm applying the glue to the, the paper and I'm being fairly generous with it. I want that fabric to stick in place. And here we are on our last one. And that hexagon is now all ready to be stitched to its little friend. So let's do another one just quickly and then I can show you how we're going to stitch them together. So I'm just, glue fold. This is great if you're traveling on a plane or if you're sat watching you know a TV and that perhaps it's a bit boring and you can just listen to what's happening rather than watching. It's a, a it's a nice mindless thing to do when you've got some spare moments. Maybe even traveling in the car this would be great. You can prepare all your hexagons ready. Okay so we've got a couple of hexagons ready. What we're going to do next, and I like to work with a bottom line thread, and one of these neutral shades is absolutely perfect. It, it, it disappears into the, my muted fabrics absolutely perfectly, and I love it because it's very fine. So I'm going to work with a very fine needle. I'm working with um, a little milliner's needle, probably a number 10. I love the fact that they have a very long, fine length to them. They absolutely glide through the fabric, and I'm just going to put a very small knot to get me started. Now the pink, as you can see, is the center one. So I'm going to sew, first of all, one onto the edge here. Now, right sides together. I like to hold them fairly tight, remembering you've got that little knot to get you started. If you're like me and sometimes you have trouble threading your needle, 
there's these gorgeous little lists, little cats, little dogs, little hearts, needle threaders, and they've been created especially for very fine eyed needles. And I'm very happy to say that they do actually work with this fine thread. Look how easy that was. And look how sweet it, the little threader is. It's magnetized so you can stick it to your scissors or anything just so you know where it is next time you're looking for it. Now another little trick, sometimes I find this thread which is very fine keeps coming unthreaded and if you're having that same problem I suggest you make one simple little tie and you tie it basically onto your needle and there it is it can't go anywhere now can't move at all as you stitch you're just taking a few strands from the top of each side of the hexagon and I do like to stitch away from me because I like to be able to see where I'm going and plan where my next stitch is going to be and continue to remember that you're going to pull that thread quite tight and you see I'm having no trouble with my thread slipping out of the needle now because I have remember tied it onto the eye done that little simple knot the stitch that I'm doing is called a whip stitch uh, there's lots of different places you can use it for but it's absolutely the perfect stitch for hexagon so I'm going to stitch right to the corner of this hexagon make sure, making sure that my corners line up nicely and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So let's get those last few stitches in place and then you're going to simply open it out, fold this hexagon in half, which is actually the one, there's your center one, the pink one, the pale blue. So that was the first one we joined. We're going to fold it gently in half line up the two pieces so that you've got the straight edges together making sure that they're fairly level here because that will ensure that it's a nice good fit and then you can carry on stitching carry on with that whip stitch just catching the top threads as you go here's the one that i finished and here it is it's got the fusible paper is going to stay inside and as you can see it's already soft and lovely so by the time i've stitched it in place using a blind hem stitch and the same whoopsie the same thread again it'll really be soft and nice so it's water soluble it does have a paper content so it can't it can't disappear completely it is going to disintegrate um, but with all the things that I've used it on I haven't actually had any problems so don't worry about that thanks for joining me today it's been lovely and I look forward to seeing you next month <music>